welcome to Bible Tract Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks Incorporated, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. And now for our Bible study, here's our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. What a delight it is to be with you here once again at Bible Tract Echoes. If this happens to be your very first time to be part of our Bible study together, I want to say a very special welcome to you. Now, right now, my Bible is open to Romans chapter 1. Romans 1, if you can, reach over, get your Bible, and join me there in that passage. I think having your own Bible open in front of you is always a more impactful time of study than just listening. Now, if you're driving, just leave your Bible alone and do listen well. But again, if your Bible's open, Romans chapter one. And as we go through our study time today, I will be encouraging you to get a free sample packet of our English gospel tracks. My announcer is going to be giving you three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address at the end of the program. So have pen and paper ready to jot down our contact information. I'm going to highlight one of our tracks in a moment, but let me let me right now lead into our Bible study time this way. Our passage today has frankly never been an easy one to preach and teach, and what it says concerning human interaction is not a polite topic, really. It's not an easy one. Today is a good day to consider not letting younger ears be listening. The verses before us were agreed upon, frankly, by every branch of the evangelical world up to about 20 years ago. But now there are segments of people who claim to love Christ, who claim to love the Bible, who have twisted these verses to say the very opposite of what they openly state. Now, rather than the Bible informing their mind and altering their minds and actions, some people are letting their minds and their actions in form and alter the Bible. That's dangerous. There's a basic rule of Bible study which says this, when the plain sense of the passage makes sense, then seek no other sense. That's exactly going to be our rule for interpreting here these verses out of Romans chapter 1. I'm going to be reviewing our outline of Romans 1, so be ready, have pen and paper ready to jot down the outline. Before I read the text, I mentioned having a gospel tract here in in my hand. Now, friend, listen, a gospel tract is a very good evangelism tool. It's a tool. It's a way for us to lengthen our outreach with the gospel. A gospel tract is a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. In the tract, it leads the person, the reader, up to a very clear telling of what the good news of the gospel is, how sins can be removed from your sin record from an unrighteous state of a sinner to become a righteous servant of God, a righteous child of God, because Jesus died on the cross. The tract in my hand right now is entitled, How Can a Person Be Away? That's a question mark. Everybody's trying to get to heaven their way, but there's a person who is the way to eternal life. His name is Jesus Christ. Now, friend, this track, How Can a Person Be Away, is the one singular track that has impacted more people in the Hindu world, more people in the Muslim world to come and alter their lives by saying, I'm going to abandon the religion of my upbringing. I'm going to turn and receive Christ as my Savior and become a follower of Jesus Christ and openly declare themselves to be a Christian. How can a person be away? I cannot, I cannot, I cannot emphasize the power and the impact, the caliber of this track. Please let me send it to you. Be ready. Jot down our contact information. If, by the way, you cannot stay to the very end to uh, hear the contact information, you can order the sample packet by going to our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. If your Bible's open, 
Romans, please, chapter 1, beginning of verse 24. Here's what the Bible says. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust, one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which is meet, which is right, which is fitting. Stop, please, right there. I allowed myself to take a little tangent in our verse-by-verse study here in Romans on the Monday and Wednesday broadcast this week, but I want to come back and get back into that verse-by-verse study. This bigger section here, verses 18 to 23 that precede this, is a paragraph that I labeled with these words, decision of the mind against God decision of the mind against God. Our guilty status before God begins with a decision in the mind. But now, beginning at verse 24 through the end of the chapter, verse 32, is a paragraph that I have titled this way, depravity of morals against God. To get the difference, we started with a decision of the mind, but now we're into depravity of morals against God. And with these verses, we move from what is happening in our thinking to look at what is happening in our doing and our practices of sin. I'm going to be looking at verses 24 through 32 in a two-segment look. Today, our verses are just 24, 25, 26, and 27. These verses detail the actions, notice the word beginning with the letter A, the actions that prove that we are depraved. When we get to 28 to 32, we're going to see the attitudes that prove that we are depraved sinners. Now, if I were to throw your mind and eyes back up to verse 18, verse 18 of the chapter begins with these words, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. Now, typically, when we think of God showing his wrath, we think of things like, oh, God sending fire down or him opening the earth and swallowing up sinners. But verses 18 to 32 is showing us that God's wrath is also revealed by him stepping back and letting sinners reap the fruit of their rebellious thinking and doing. Three times we see the phrase, God gave them up. That's a statement that God is stepping back. Since the descendants of Adam and Eve wanted to rebel in our thinking, God then lets us reap the ugly life actions that come from rebellious thinking. So, here in verses 24, 25, 26, and 27, what actions show us or reveal to us our depravity? Now, that word depravity simply means we're corrupted, we're polluted, we're perverted. What actions prove that we're perverted? Notice three words I'm going to use, all beginning with the letter C. The first one is the word controlled, based upon verse 24. In verse 24, we're controlled. We're controlled by our fleshly, physical desires and passions. We're told that these are unclean in the verse. That uncleanness talked about here has in view the things like adultery, prostitution, and any other sexual actions done that are outside of God's bounds of marriage. These acts, the Bible says in verse 24, dishonor our bodies. That word simply means that we are mistreating and we are bringing shame on ourselves by these lustful actions. And by the way, pornography would be considered under the realm of verse 24 here. And pornography is killing the Bible preaching churches of our day. So verse 24, the word is controlled. For verse 25, the word is concern, concern. We are more concerned, verse 25 says, for the created world that's around us than we are with the creator of the world. In our minds, we have changed the truth about God into a lie. 
Let me look at that verse again. Verse 25 says again these words, who changed the truth of God or about God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. Stop right there for a second. In our minds, we have changed the truth about God into a lie. The word change means to exchange or substitute. Now, rather than letting the creation draw our focus onto the creator, we stayed focused on what was created, and we began to worship and serve the created world rather than the maker of it all. And whenever we see this going on, we are seeing depravity in action according to the word of God. Verse 24, the word was controlled. Verse 25, the word is concern. For verses 26 and 27, the word is corrupted. Corrupted. These two verses show the corruption through unnatural passions. Now, because we have exchanged God's truth for a lie, God in his wrath allows humanity to degrade itself through vile affections. These two verses are openly declaring that sexual acts where men are with men and women are with women, where that's being practiced, these are depraved actions. According to verses 26 and 27, the practice of homosexuality is labeled as changing the natural use of the body. In other words, it perverts the natural order of sexuality designed by the Creator God, and that natural order, the right order, brings a blessing from God. That's why verse 27 ends with the statement that those who practice these perversions of human sexuality receive, or literally are receiving ones, of a reward which is not good. They are rewarded or they earn an outcome which is in contrast to the reward of obeying God's laws on human sexuality. There's always been a good reward for obeying God's laws and God's designs, but there's always been a bad reward for not obeying these things. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, what we have are called by God to do in our day, in, in this era, in this day today, this, this Thursday of this week, what we're called to do by God is to present the gospel of Christ to a world where righteous living is in stark contrast to the culturally accepted practices of depravity. We who know Christ have the only news that frees and transforms lives bound by depraved thinking and depraved actions. So what is our job today? To wring our hands and just hope we just kind of huddle in our churches and hope it all goes away? No. We've been called to go out to the world, this world that's depraved and twisted and perverted, to go out with, to that world, to love the people who are perverted, share with them the Christ, share with them the gospel, that they might be set free and transformed to become worshipers of God. Oh, friend, get the sample packet. Get our tracks. Let's be impacting our world with righteous lives and the truth about righteous living, the truth of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 309- 828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.